All right. All right. Fine. I'll be a gracious host. How you doing? Little Mermaid is the scariest Disney movie by far, though. Why the hell is Ace Blade in your Kickstarter? <laughs> Some comics. We going I'm getting controversial today. We're gonna get controversial today with with. My my proudest moment is this interview. And being able to talk to you too. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Taurus Comics in collaboration with Fourth Wall Production proudly brings to you the 50th episode of the Four Tales podcast. I am your host, Kyra Silva from Taurus, Co- Taurus Comics. Across the way is... The... Can you stop you laughing at all? It. You almost had it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Across the way is that guy from Ace Blade. It's me. Danny J. Quick, and together we are your two award-winning Blurred Comic Creators here to help you find your next favorite comic. We are live on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube, and a host of other programs, so if you're listening or watching us live, thank you for your support. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and review this podcast, because all your positive reviews and interactions help us reach a bigger audience. Every time. Every time. How's it going, man? Hey, man. I'm excited, man. I'm full of energy, man. How are you doing? I am excited, but I am not full of energy. I am exhausted. I am tired. I'm ready for. I'm about to pull Morgan actually on this show and just fall asleep. Honestly, <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. Come on, man. Morgan you're, you're Dale Kion Iverson. Yeah, your uh, your Kings got a good preseason win. They are undefeated in the Did preseason they? for two years in a row. They are undefeated in the preseason. Did they um, get a win last night? I don't. I didn't. I didn't know that. Did they? Yes. You, yes, you did. And they absolutely destroyed my Lakers. Um, oh. So you should have plenty of energy, man. Feed off of that. Oh, off of that oh. 40, oh. That 40 something point victory. 47 point win. Yeah. It's yeah. It's quite what, what was up with that? Um, I'll tell you what was up. There was no AD, and uh, Russell Westbrook got hurt in the like first 10 minutes of the game. And they're still counting on LeBron to be the primary scorer, um, mm-hmm. point guard, and uh, rebounder. On, rebounder. Defender. All of that. <laughs> Head coach that. at this point. <laughs> I I literally was was watching the game like who are the like there's a there's so many players that I didn't even like I didn't even know. Like people that have not ever been on an NBA team before, like <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous at this point. But hey, I'm excited for the season either way. I think it's I think LeBron and AD are gonna play well. We'll see about the rest of the team. But anyway. We're not here to talk about sports, man. We here to no. Talk- we we here to talk about sports. I want to keep talking about my king beating <laughs> up your Lakers. I love this. Is a, this is the only part of the year I get to brag because once the regular season starts, on, we're gonna probably <laughs> suck again. Nah, man. Y- y- y'all got a y'all got a good team this year. Y'all got a, a good hey, team. And my Niners just beat your Panthers, huh? I definitely don't want to talk about the Panthers. I I definitely don't want to talk about. The All right. All right. Fine. Yeah. All right. What was that? Never mind. All right, so what do we want to talk about today? Because it's our 50th episode. We have some amazing guests. Do you want to just bring them amazing. on and just start this or what? Yeah, let's just bring them on. I mean, we only got, right. we only got to, I'll just bring them on one by one. All and, right. Um, All right, so first off, well, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to bring you guys on the screen. I want you to introduce yourself to anybody that maybe doesn't know who you are. Tell us one thing about yourself that maybe people don't know about you. And then tell us what you're working on <clears> right now. Starting with Mr. Epic. My name is Mike Watson, aka Most Epic. Uh, something that you do not know about me is that I hate beans. Uh, and what I'm working on right now is Hot Shot 12, Five Star Number Two, Green Zone Two and Three, Zero Vent Number One, um, and finishing the packing of. Green of uh, Emerald Quest because we've shipped out everything for Vigilance. We've shipped out everything for Green Zone, and we are now going to finish off Emerald Quest shipping for our Kickstarter this weekend. Dang, well, that's the rest of our episode right there. We don't have any time for anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. I want to know how you love burritos and hate beans. That's weird, but okay. You don't put the beans in the burritos. <laughs> Come on now. That's terrible. All right, all right, all right. Let's go on to our next guest here. <laughs> 
how do I even start with like um that type of opening, right? Like, hello. <laughs> um, so hey guys, I'm actually the singer designs. Oh, you can call me Vess. Um, one thing that you don't know about me, I like to play video games a lot, I guess. <laughs> On I the DL. <laughs> um and what I'm working on right now is actually post-tober, which I have a Kickstarter for. So, yeah, I got a sketch while I'm working here and hanging out with you guys. <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate you being on. All right. Your turn, sir. What, what was that, uh, Usher? My name is that Usher? <laughs> yes. No, they, this is this, this is Usher. This is just what's good. You know what I'm saying? This is what, what's good. Usher. I just want to make so y'all that's clear all right so uh my name i write for uh fourth wall with nanny j quick quick uh create with a uh, uh come and love and uh eventually watch all of our movies and we make a lot of money while you use us um something you don't know about me uh, uh i like long want some sets in the sand and uh uh Actually, Danny Long told type. me about that already. Oh, okay. Uh, um, I like. I think, I think um, that, that seems very weird that he would tell you that. But um, yeah, I, I, I all uh, me and Mike have that in common. And and the way that you get around that is you eat the burrito without beans. This it's pretty Absolutely. simple actually. Absolutely. All right. All right. Yep. Gio, you're up. Nope. It's four, not going to let me bring him in. Four? I'm, there he is. Uh, okay, good. Good. I'm here. All right. All right. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, my name is George Kant. I am uh, the creator of the Beware Tyler cartoon. Um, one thing you may not know about me is, I don't know, I'm left-handed. <laughs> um, what? What? You know? This whole episode is going to be about you being left-handed now. I don't know. It, like... <laughs> I don't know. Shit. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not awake right now. I'm sorry. Um, uh, what I'm currently working on is Still Beware of Tyler, which you can read every week uh, on Comics Kingdom by King Features. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Um, and last but said, said it was a cartoon. Mm-hmm. You said it was a cartoon. We're going to come back to that. So, Javon Stokes in the building. Yeah, you know, nobody. Danny didn't interrupt nobody else's intro. I just want to point that out. So I you know, am, but that's I am all right. Everybody. Hey, 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 hey. What's <laughs> up? My name is Javon Stokes, visually Stoke Media creator of Heat and Strong. I did that fire piece of artwork right there. Uh, let's see. Uh, thing you don't know about me? Oh, I used to work at Victoria's <clears throat> Secret for like two years. Uh, whoa, whoa. That was your favorite job, whoa. wasn't it? Whoa. <laughs> hey, hey. At, yeah. <laughs> Damn the Victoria's Secret. Your man Devon came out firing. It's top five, part two, it's live. Top five. Let's get uh, it. In. Let's see uh, what I'm working on right now. Uh, uh, heat number two, uh, strong number one, and I got two projects that I can't talk about just yet. Oh, right. by the way, I'm left-handed too. <laughs> Team what? Left-handed. What? Right. Way, to, way to take my thunder there, All right? Lefties? I was showing a solidarity, man. Two lefties? I can't believe it. I'm right. showing solidarity, George. Come on, man. Now you, now you Biden. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> there can only be one. Yeah. There can yeah. only be hey, one. Hey, hey, show that fire uh-huh. cover by, by Mr. Mike Watson for strong, man. Show that fire cover. <laughs> show that fire. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Nice. Look at that. Look at that. Getting it in. Clean. All right, I guess this is going to be our, our, our top for today. Left-handed people are a hell spawn. Damn. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Oh, no. Hey, you see this? I thought we were the only ones there. that were in our Just right mind. Oh. Between between the no uh, team no beans and the left-handed, I mean, you got some, <laughs> got some straight up uh, weirdos in the in the <laughs> on the show this week. But we love y'all though. We love y'all no, either yeah. way. We appreciate you guys being on here. It's our fiftieth episode. I did yeah, not think right. we would actually get to 50 episodes, honestly. Especially when we were doing this bi-weekly. And then that, Danny was like, we need to do every week because we need to get a bigger audience. That's not, then, that's not why I said it at all. And I <laughs> said, but Danny, 
I'm waking up at six o'clock in the morning on a Saturday to do this with you, and you're all like, "F that, we're doing this every week." <laughs> said, "If you want to be successful, you gotta sacrifice." That's what I said. That's not, you have never said that. Here we are. And here we are at fifty episodes uh, now with the uh, the agents of Geekdom killing it on the um, on the network. Man, I, I love it, man. I appreciate y'all coming back and hanging out with us. Um, but we're gonna get controversial today. We're gonna get controversial today. Um, I don't know how yet, but we're gonna get to it. Um, I thought we was, there was a topic we were supposed to be talking about. I know, but okay. Um, no, Facebook user, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, my I'm dealing with just trying to do the touch screen on my computer, and this is annoying the hell out of me because my mouse is messed up. All right, so we do have two topics today. Um, the first one we want to get into. If I can get my computer to work, is what is the difference for you guys between <clears throat> mainstream and indie comic books? Like, is, is there a specific publishing company you have to be on to be considered mainstream? Sorry, I'm just trying to get on it. There, Dan doesn't have a plan. What? That's what I was trying to click on, but it wouldn't let me. <laughs> I told Kyron if he would give me access to actually control the show, I could help him. I, he, never, he never wants to, he don't he just wants me to be on here and just talk <laughs> and do no, no work. So that's what I'm doing. You literally have the same login I do because you're hey, part Kyron, of the it's, it's okay, agency. man. Kyron, it's okay. He ain't got access in top five either, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we do want to get into that. That's something Danny and I got into at the end of our last episode for some reason. What do you guys think is the definition between being indie combo creators and being mainstream combo creators. All right, I'll go. Uh, I think the I think it has more to do with like your print run, right? Like I think once you hit a few thousand books monthly, then you kind of are moving your way out of small press. Like to me, independent has always kind of been like small press. So like once like I, another exa- again, example I give you is like Walking Dead. Walking Dead started out with a smaller run and then it became the juggernaut that it is. So like you can graduate out of it. Like if you you got to be under a certain amount of, you know, monthly copies. But Walking Dead opinion. started off at Image Comics, which most people nowadays don't consider that being indie. Well, I mean, you're independent because Image isn't paying you money. Like, they're not an entity that is paying you money. Like, you are doing all the work. Okay. Mike, you had a hand up. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. I didn't have a hand hand up. I'm chilling. I think, think, okay. I do agree with Javon. You know, it it depends on how many you're selling. But um, I say, I, I feel like it's the infrastructure, though. Like, I think if you have we've talked about this on top five live too, where we talk about artists who have this built in you got the advertising you got the marketing you got you know the, the um, name recognition you got characters you can you have the ability to bring in other characters from other you know from other more popular titles things like that you know if you have that i don't really consider you to be independent but like javon said um, you know, Invincible, Walking Dead, you know, those books started very small press, even though they did have the backing of, you know, a big company and even Milestone, but Static, Static and, um, you know, Icon and Rocket and, and, you know, all those characters, they had DC backing them. So were they really considered independent or they were never considered independent? I don't know why you keep using Milestone. <clears throat> I, because they didn't. I mean, OK. I understand you. I hear you. They had the big names and they had access to. They had the access to. Uh, <laughs> they had access to some DC characters, but we saw in the milestone documentary that they wasn't really getting the help. Like they, especially towards the end, they really weren't getting the help that they were supposed to. So but they DC had- was marketing for them. They were doing like they were doing like fifty thousand, sixty thousand plus copies. They were. They had funding from DC backing them like whether it was a lot or a little they still had it they they had dc doing marketing they they weren't independent at all 
Yeah. I mean, technically they weren't. It just seems like, especially in the, in, <laughs> they were, what, how would you compare, um, like a book like The Walking Dead with a book like, um, um, what's it called? Hardware. How would you con- compare the way that The Walking Dead was promoted or got out to people to, um, to, to a book like, like Hardware that did great, you know, in the beginning, but like we see where it's at now. Even with the resurgence now, you know, I, I just don't see it. I, I don't know, man. I just I just have trouble with it. There you go. Was that a go question ahead, for me or him? Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, now I have my hand up. Um, you don't have to raise your hand up. <laughs> this is a class. <laughs> top five, man. You ain't got to raise your hand. It's not top five. All right, I feel some top five vibes getting ready to pop off. <laughs> but not Morgan like bounced out, so I guess not. I know, right, man. He's asleep. He's asleep. Um, for, for me, um, I feel like uh, Marvel and D. Once you're in the Marvel and DC range, you are you are not an independent. Uh, for me, I still consider Image Comics an independent because there is specifically no mascot character for Image Comics. Those comics are all produced by their studios, by their individual teams. They have such a variety of different comic books there at different varying levels or whatnot. So for me, Image is still uh, it's independent. It's like the level of independence I want to have. That's like the level that I'm shooting for. Um, and, you know, do you have somebody like Tom McFarlane with all the success, the success that he has? He's still an independent, and he's breaking an independent comic book record every single month. Then it comes out with Spawn. So to me, that consideration of them being independent is still there because that dude still qualifies for our records. Um, Image, I mean, Invincible, one of the best independent books out there, no matter how popular it gets. That's, I just feel like in that mind state, that's what it is. All the other publishers that have been out that are underneath them, and it, it could be a wrong wrong thought process, but it's mine, um, I feel are all independents. Once you hit Marvel and DC, they're the juggernauts. They're the mainstream companies. They're, you know, they're the ones that you sell out to, to the mouse, signing you a check and stuff like that. But I feel like there's varying levels of success in oh. independence. And like, uh, and to what Javon was saying, like, we're small press. We want to go to medium press and big press. So you're saying if so you're saying if you if you go work for Marvel in DC, you a sellout? Is that what that is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> <Is that, laughs> <Sell out, baby. laughs> Hey, I, I'll sell out. <laughs> uh, I mean, sell out. I got no life. problem with it. No, no, no. I got you. I got you. It, it don't bother me at all because I'm fully aware. I because at some point I do want to be able to say on my on my resume that I did a Marvel book. I fully yeah. understand everything I do for Marvel is owned by Marvel. I want to be able to say I did a Spider Man or I did an X Men book yeah. just at least once or twice on my resume. Absolutely, yeah. we're going to have a into the Spider Verse hot shot sighting. So, and we'll <laughs> so, so I want to say this, and I've said this on on top five before. Like, I had I was lucky enough to have had like a real brief conversation with Jim Starlin, and it's funny we talk about sellout because what he told me very specifically, he was like, "Look, you keep working till the big two come for you. <laughs> then you use the big two's platform to make your name bigger than it is, and then you get the hell out." Whatever. <laughs> go back and do your thing with your name bigger than it is now. So I don't yeah. look at it really as selling out. To me, it's I'm going to use you to become bigger than I am, and then that's I'm going to go be bigger because that's what Robert Kirkman did. Yep. Yep. Robert Kirkman is too. literally the king of that style. He he, he started out, okay, you know, Invincible, yeah. Walking Dead. Actually, he was doing other stuff before that. Started doing all that, like, you know, Marvel stuff. And then, wasn't he working for Marvel before Walking Dead? No, he was doing, he was doing, um, uh, uh, he did the Marvel Zombies before, he was doing Walking Dead before Marvel Zombies. That's why they went to him. I like it. If you look at, like, um, Stephanie Williams right now, she's writing, she's writing the Nubia series. Um, she's she's independent, you know. She's got her own projects that she wants to work on and stuff. But I just had a comment. I didn't realize she was from Charlotte, North Carolina, until you know uh, last year. You uh, know, she you know she was doing a signing here, 
in Greensboro. And I, you know, I got a chance to talk to her for a little bit. And she said the same thing. She said, listen, it's a tech and I got the opportunity to write media. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Yep. But they're absolutely using her name and her, you know, and the, in the, the prestige that she's built up on Twitter and online. They're absolutely using that. So she's doing the same thing by using their platform to get her name out there and to get, you know, and to get these comic, these, uh, you know, like she invited guests at uh, at Comic Cons and stuff like that now. So absolutely, I don't. I I, I was just joking around with, with Mike. I don't think that's selling out at all. I think you have to, you know, you have to do what's do what's best for your career. Okay, wait. I want to know who Facebook user is. I said Big Two has stole thirteen of my people. Does that count? Who is that? And I think that's fish. Is that? Fish? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, that's fish. He was dude. talking about he was talking about kite man earlier. I know that's kite man's DC though. Oh, Tony. Okay. Tony, <laughs> <laughs> Tony Clap. Who, who's singing their heart out, man? I hear no, Tony Control singing their heart out. Oh, okay. I think that's my daughter. Um, no, nah, I, I had to go singing though. But you, I, you keep it up, girl. <laughs> I go off screen. I take um. I, I I agree with everything y'all said. I mean, for me, it's I think it it comes down to resources. Like, you know, it comes down to resources distribution. And one of our big goals is to get to the point. I just told Danny this last weekend when I was editing um, the top five live, um, the Super Shorts podcast. Uh, I can't wait until we can get to the point where literally all we have to, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying, let me. I just want to write. I don't have to. To promote, I don't have to like it. I can team that can pick that up and run with it. You know what I'm saying? Like once once we do it, you know what I'm saying? The team, this I think it'd be dope if we do this as a press run. I think it'd be cool if we do this or whatever. And they're enthusiastic, and me and Danny don't have to. You know, well, Danny's addicted to TikTok, so I can't. You know, no, I don't even know that it's a a, a, a marketing employee at this time. I'm like literally, if you make. TikToks, so, so uh, or watch the second tip count so, because his first one got too big. No, yeah, no, 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 Yes, they are both over oh, a thousand. Are you, are you making money off of TikTok? A little bit of money, but I'm. What I'm that's saying, a yes or no question. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying no. I'm that's saying a yes that, or no. I'm saying that. I yes or no. <laughs> you can't handle the truth. No. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> This is this is no, you know no. you, you you talk about top five energy Mike you bringing something today that's top of her right there. Danny you gonna, you gonna let that man come for you like that? You gonna let that man come? I know, man. Like Damn, you better right. Danny Danny know, I want Danny to know that he is doing something on social media that a lot of us are trying to do, and he is doing it very successfully. That he has figured out to some degree success on TikTok that is bringing money to his <laughs> other platforms. Well, wait, can I can I interject here? Danny has told me that he's actually made more, more money off of Facebook than TikTok at this point as far as the stars that you now get with Facebook. He's mm. actually made more money doing that than just directly through TikTok. Ooh. Yes, uh, real, because, because uh, Facebook is trying to catch up. They're trying to get them content created. They are paying better. Facebook is paying better, bro. Uh, so if you, if you <laughs> in making these videos, I'm telling you, do, put them on, put them on there, put them on your YouTube, cause YouTube, YouTube uh, shorts too, bro. Oh man, yup. Our little, uh, our, our YouTube, we've been you know posting on YouTube for a while, but our YouTube is growing a little bit because of the shorts also. So listen, hey, I'm I'm gonna use this addiction. I'm gonna use this addiction, man. Uh, so we are gonna make it work. See, so I wasn't lying. I wasn't. I mean, I admire that about I admire that about Danny because I I just my brain doesn't work that way to use like TikTok and stuff like that. Like I'm I'm a make a comic, I can sell I can sell the hell out of it on, in Comic Cons, but like all the social media marketing and stuff, I suck at it. Like, yeah. So I mean, I appreciate you know, and I watch and I try to 
you know, emulate. Dude. I just can't get my brain around TikTok. I'll be watching the hell out of Jenny J. Quick on TikTok. I'll be trying to figure out what he does. I'll be trying, I'll be stitching his videos to get in on his discussions. It, you know, it's he's good, Danny. As I was talking about Danny on um. That's the next thing I'm gonna say about you, Danny. <laughs> oh, that was that was very kind. I appreciate y'all. That was the nicest thing he might have ever said about him. That's not true. That's, that's not true. I mean, we no, have a question from Brad saying, "Danny, does your family get a cut of your TikTok portion?" <laughs> Mm. I do want to know. Actually, does do you actually a ninety nine percent to your kids and family? Ninety nine percent cut. Like okay, because they earn like most of your TikToks you anyway. Bills in the house, right? You pay bills. <laughs> exactly. That's, exactly. Your, that's your cut. Be serious. You like this? You like these groceries that I buy? <laughs> if you walk in that house, if you that money and didn't share some some with my sis, World War Three. Try it the rap. They got mortgage, my, right? Like that's shit. My wife, my wife just, my wife just started uh, making her own videos. I finally convinced her after a whole year that it was worth it. So, um, anyways, but you know, that's I think that's another part of being independent, though. Like we got to use the tools that we have. You know, use whatever is best for you. Like, um, this is killing it on 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 Twitch. You know, like um um Mike in in chat and draw like um Geo on on like for for a long time. Wasn't a beware toddler on webtoons, like killing it on webtoons, you know. So those are all things that I can't I literally cannot do. I can't I cannot do that stuff. So you know, you just gotta use use the tools that you have that work best for you. And um, you know, just be consistent, I think. So that's one thing that I that I admire about all of all of y'all is the consistency, the the ability to just do what it is that you love and keep doing it, you know. Um and and that I think that is the most effective thing for independent creator. Let us lead into the second topic that we have for today, Ooh. which is um, what there. <laughs> I had to post that up too. Yo, I hate Kevin. Man. I hate Kevin. Man. <laughs> so, all of us have had different, varying degrees of success with making comics. Um, some of us on web comics, some of us on Twitch, like Danny was saying, and YouTube and things like that. So, what are some of the tactics? that you can maybe give our audience that are good or bad as far as increasing your, your readership, increasing your viewers, things like that, or just selling comics in general? I don't know. Everybody keeps telling me, be yourself, best or work out. <laughs> it's, been, it's been what it is. I'm going to be completely honest. Like, um, I'm very open-minded, outgoing. I love art. So when anybody asks me questions, I usually think, Okay, let's do a mini tutorial and you know get into it and um you know just, it's it's mostly trying to serve my community because my community is always serving me by supporting me. So that's like my mindset, you know. Um if they they went ahead, they made this cute little character with me, I went ahead, turned it into a fun challenge, then it ended up in my comic and now they feel like they're a part of something and they want to support it even more because they know that they're a part of something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's like basically what it is. Just be yourself, do your hustle, and enjoy the ride because your people is going to be the wave that takes you. Absolutely. You got uh, you got to interact with people in ways they don't expect. Uh, we're sitting here right now with uh, seven super talented individuals, and um, they're very good. At, everybody's very good at what they do, and it's a matter of how only, can you... I only count six. There's one, two, three, four. Are you counting me? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm deceased. I was wondering where oh, that man, joke I thought he was going. talking about me for a second. I, 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 I was wondering where the I, joke was I, going. I, I, you whipped that back I, around. I, thought I was, he was like, leaving, okay. fully expected him to be leaving me out there. I fully expected that. Good I job, thought I'd leave you out there too, more. I did, <laughs> and I was gonna throw it. It's okay, y'all got to go ahead. Person okay, wait. Me. Why did I take that cover, Danny, to the last event, and that was my best sell out of all my books? I sold more books of Danny's book than my own. I was. Hey, hey don't worry about that. Just keep going. Like <laughs> hey, let, let me tell you. I think to me, the one thing I learned in in doing this for for, for a few years now is you got to learn how to sell your book in 30 seconds. Yeah. That's about that as much time as you yes. get, especially at a Comic-Con. Like, you got about 30 seconds to convince somebody who steps to your table to buy your book. 
if you can't do it in 30 seconds, you better figure it out because you got like, like, you know, Michael pointed out, there's a whole lot of people out there trying to do the same thing. And, um, they got, you know, customers have a lot of choices. So if you can't figure out how to sell your book in 30 seconds, either something's wrong with the book or something's wrong with the salesman. So mm-hmm. once you figure out whatever, whichever it is, like that's that to me is the thing I've learned. Like, like as a businessman, like I got a question. I got a question because I, I've, <clears throat> and I might be telling on myself here, but I don't know if it's jealousy or or what. But there's certain titles, right, that don't even need a salesman, right? Like we had um, uh, Harriet Tubman, Demon Slayer. Like you don't even have to pitch that book to people like you only have to say those four words harriet tubman demon slayer and people like i want to buy it you say tuskegee heirs to people and they want to buy it like what how how can we get to that point where like literally all i got to do is show you the comic you know i don't i don't have that ability. like ace blade is a cool name like it's a cool sounding name but you don't exactly know what ace blade is until i tell you about it i get that 30 seconds you know, um, what what is like, how do we get to that level where you can just hang on, show it to somebody and they automatically know what it is? Uh, my, wanna, sis, my, my yeah. sis already said it. Yeah. Ha, ha, half of that right. pitch is half of that pitch is already known. Right. And then you saw a cool you, you saw a cool part on the on the backside of it. You're good. Yeah. Because Gigi Ears is visually incredible. So when you see that out the gate at a comic table, you're like, what's that? And like, oh, this is Tuskegee Ears. It's about their grandkids. So that's it. You're done. Yeah. 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 Art brought them over. Name sealed the deal. Harriet Tubman, Demon Slayer. You don't need to see any art with that, but you hear Harriet Tubman. And then she's a Demon Slayer now. Where's that at? Where can I get it at? Right here at this table. And you're so... Yeah, that's that's not for everybody. Like, that's not for every concept, um, unfortunately. Like mm-hmm. that's just you know it it yeah and you got historical characters I mean Danny if you did Malcolm X Malcolm I mean, X you know what I'm gonna keep it to myself I came X-Man. up I just came up with something in my I just came no, up with something Malcolm X in my head. Man is mine we gonna make it happen <laughs> we can't hear you Morgan Morgan you muted we can't hear you you muted anyways I don't do this book called uh, Barack Tuesdays. Obama Alien Fighter. That's my next book, Barack yeah. Obama Alien Fighter. But you know what though? Real talk, you yeah. might sell you might sell out real well because real quick. Yeah, like it's name brand. Like when you like you know, Danny was saying about like Ace Blade. Ace Blade's a cool name, but like we got all these other superheroes, hot shot, everything, everything. That's just a regular superhero. But you know, the concept is is what a, that's what I mean at 30 seconds. But like mm-hmm. you know, when you talk about something like that, you know. <laughs> yeah, those are uh those are real quick attention grabs then as uh as javon is saying here you've got ace play you've got heat you've got hot shot you got this and like how do you start finding your crowd how do you start standing out so you can find your audience because i'm also a big fan of there's enough for everybody to eat you've yeah. got to start playing on who you are as an individual or, or as a brand um and I can't even take full credit for it, but it was definitely a freestyle comics idea when Tony came up and said, we need to do wrestling for a whole day. Mm. We need to do a wrestling event. And we did FSK Mania with our characters and featured other people's characters in a, in a computerized wrestling match. And Yo. people were watching that and people were buying stuff from our website because we, like like, we treated it like a TV show. We showed commercials from you. our books and stuff. Bro, when I tell you my mom has never been more proud of me than when I showed her <laughs> when I showed her Ace Blade getting beat up on the rest in the wrestling match, I was like, Mom, come on now. Like, like legit, she's 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 sharing it to the to the family like group and everything, like group chat. I'm like, yo, this like we've been doing this, but we definitely gotta do something. We got gotta keep that going. I, I love I mean, you. I wasn't invited. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, next time. Hey, but you know, gonna, I, yeah, you still need it. You know what I learned, um, and I and I've been doing this recently, is um, when somebody comes to my table, I don't pitch my book yet. I ask, you know, what comic books do you read? 
<laughs> and then they tell me, and then, you know, I'm able to pull like, oh, I read static. Oh, okay. Yeah. My book is like static, even though, you know, it could be like walking dead. And I, I, swear, yeah. I promise you, I will find a comparison. Like, just, oh yeah, you, you like such a yeah, yeah, my book got that. And, okay. It's, no, it's not lying. It's just finding a way to like connect <laughs> my like what they like with my book. Sometimes I sometimes I get like a, a property that like it just it ain't hitting and I'll be like, mm. Well, you should try something else, you know, blah blah yeah. blah blah. But like when it comes to superheroes, right. I can pull from anything, boy. Like, oh yeah, I like Storm. Oh, okay, my character's black too. I don't know. Like, <laughs> like I'll wow. find something. No, I mean, I'll find something and then, you know, whatever it is to keep them at the table, because that's my 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 goal is I'm going to keep you at this table to the point where you're like, oh, OK, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. Hey, Ren, yeah, Ren I, says I, I, about bending the truth. Uh, Ren has a different tactic, though. He likes to just steal stuff. Like, just, <laughs> yes. He just, he just likes to steal. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, um. Our pitch at our table has gotten very massive, so we've had to shrink it down. We've got over 13 titles now under our right. label and over 30 and over 30 comic books. So I used to right. be able to do a pitch in 45 seconds with six comics. Y'all saw that flex really. right there? Y'all yeah. saw that flex? <laughs> yeah. I, just want, I just want to make sure yeah. everybody saw that flex, all right? Okay. Yep. That was com completely <laughs> meant. Yeah, but we, we had to shrink it 13, so people... Sorry. When people, <laughs> but when people come to the table now, it's, it's a matter of what type of books do you like to read, or this is the Freestyle Comics universe with a, a variety of different books. So which one stands out? Like, I make people look at the rack. We have the rack spread out. I'm like, which book catches your attention? And I'll tell you about the whatever book you see. Yeah. That's good. That's, that's yeah. good. Hey, man. I love Me you, and Danny man. just fool, fool people. <laughs> <laughs> we we start people talking about stuff that ain't got nothing to do with comics. They come to our table and we'll talk about whatever they got on their shirt. Yeah, you know, whatever's happening yep. in the aisle. That. Nothing. We just you know start yep. trying to make one conversation with people. And 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 one thing also about Indies is a lot of times people are investing in you as a person instead mm -hmm. of the character. You know, they don't really they don't really know about know or, or or anything no. like that until they read the books until they get interested in them. So. They're trying to, you know, feel if you are a genuine person, if you are somebody that they want to support. So, you know, a lot of times me and Morgan will literally just talk about we'll talk about LeBron and Jordan, you know, and people will come over and people will come over and just just jump in the conversation with us. We were talking about um, Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson. You know, me and Morgan disagree on a lot of things. I don't know why that is. <laughs> really. I hadn't noticed. <laughs> but yeah, I know. You know that at all. <laughs> we'll, uh, you know, we'll just have a discussion and people will jump in with it and then we'll take them over and be like, yo, all right, so this is, you know, what we're trying to do. This, uh, These are our comics. And, you know, usually, usually it works. And yeah, you got to be... Like... Go ahead, Morgan. Oh, I, I, I mean, I was just gonna, I, I was going to add to that just saying, I, I mean, I don't like that. Literally, whatever me and Danny were literally just talk, talk about, like, we're not... People think... We're, we're doing and other stuff together that like we planned that out we didn't uh we, you know what i'm saying like whatever we were just talking about is what we were we're still talking about when they walk by i'm trying to clock people kind of to see one i i watch their eye gaze table what they're looking at when they're walking around interest level when they're walking by because you know especially like they're gonna look at a whole, whole bunch of stuff they might not stop at your table but but it doesn't mean they're not gonna come back through some of them like oh yeah i'm gonna come back by and you're like no 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 they're not you know but <laughs> i try to work I, and then we just use that you know what i'm saying because to, to me authenticity is everything so i mean right. e even yeah. in your pitch even if you're not good at pitching if you can get them to be best in you like danny said they'll buy, buy everything else yeah. You yeah absolutely you got to be uh completely honest too like you have to be a genuine person uh, when I go to combo conventions and I'm talking to people on the line, I start off the debate with, hey, my name is Mike Watson. I am a combo creator from Columbus. You don't know who I am, but I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm about to bribe you. <laughs> All right? and, they, and, and people laugh and they're like, what are you talking about? No, real talk. I'm about to bribe you to come to my table. I'm going to give you a ticket. 
come get a free item just to see what I have at my table. If you buy something, great, I'm happy. My kids can eat Chipotle tonight, but then if you don't buy nothing, that's cool. They like ramen, and you still get a free treat. So <laughs> it goes, it works out for you. It does. And yeah. people just dig dig that you know that verse or whatever. They come over. I mean, everybody doesn't come over, but some people do come over. I do the pitch. They either they either buy something or they don't. But they laughed, and they were and they were caught up enough to say, "Well, let me go check this out." <laughs> I think uh, my, I just want to um, go ahead. I'm gonna oh, say before we move on. I just want to tell Ren to go to hell, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, when when it comes to me, it's uh, kind of interesting being that I am a woman making comics. So my husband, he's next to me, and people automatically gravitate to him, and mm -hmm. they're like, mm -hmm. "Um, you did this. This is amazing." He's like, "No, my wife is the writer, the artist, and everything that you see on this table." <laughs> so they look at me like. What? <laughs> yeah. There's so you, many you know, you got them right there, though. You got yeah. them right there. So, mm. like, uh, me and him <clears throat> ping pong and talk to people, and that's what kind of, like, helps with the selling and getting it through because, you know, they see him, they see me. They have to figure out, wait a minute, who's doing what? <laughs> mm. And when they figure out it's me, they're like, oh, man, my daughter, she likes to draw. So they'll pull out, like, her drawings and stuff. Mm. And I'll be like, yeah, I really <laughs> like that. She needs to keep going, you know. And I, I'm on the courage of art. I don't care if you draw a stick, man. If you want to draw, we going to draw. So mm. I, I encourage them. I tell them what I've been doing because I've been draw drawing ever since I was five. And um, the grandparents, the parents, they'll buy everything just mm -hmm. because they had that connection and then they'll like pass it along with their kids and be like, Hey, look, you can talk to her. She's been there. She's done that. And you can do it too. Absolutely. Well, and then so, I gotta I, I say this, uh, like I, and I bet Mike can, 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 can relate with me on this. My voice is loud and it carries. And so like, if I'm pitching to some one person, I'm loud because I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, it's comic cons are loud, but I'm louder. Yeah. <laughs> and so like people walking by will hear me and like they'll look and you know you know y'all know how it is people do the look but they like try to walk away too but i'll catch them and be like hey man i can multitask come on over here i can talk and i by that time i like three or four people and i'm loud and you know i'm you know i'm doing every, my whole thing and then they'll be like okay cool and so like i'm like all right i'm getting everybody don't worry i got you i got you i got you and even when you know like so for like i know a lot of people i'll see at comic cons and they're very soft you know they talk very softly and everything and you know that might work for some people but for me y'all gotta know no. i'm here like everybody <laughs> know i'm here everybody I'm on this road yelling too. Know. right start yelling at people too. <laughs> it absolutely does not work and javon's right like if i'm in the middle of a conversation i got people at my table and if I even catch somebody glancing over my, hey, yeah, come on over. Come on over. You look, come on over. You look for more than five seconds, so legally you have to come to the table. Right. I don't. I just say dumb shit. I don't care. Um, <laughs> I'll mean, be like, like, hey, come on over, man. I won't bite. They told me to yeah, stop. I'll tell people, hey, come look at the comic. Come check out my comic books. The looking is absolutely free today, so that's a one day offer, just special for you. Like whatever catches people, it gets them to smile and say, oh, "All right, dude, here I come. Let me check you out. Let me see what you're talking about, or whatever." You know, you just got to be. Comic book conventions are promotional events. That mm -hmm. they are your opportunity to win people over, expand your audience, and gain fans. That's how, yeah. for me, that's how you have to look at it first and foremost. Because um, once you realize that, then you find your nature, you find your rhythm. You find your arena and you get to perform in that arena and win. You heard that, Danny? I see it. Did you like did you hear what he said about comic book cons? Okay, cool. I, no, I heard him, but I also thought <laughs> I also fought to him before the show, so <laughs> he, he, he did. My um um <laughs> in, in my old age, uh my mentality is changing. <laughs> I was uh I was telling Danny J Quick and, and Kyron earlier that uh, this year, I noticed uh, a difference with the shows that I've been going to. Um, I love going to mainstream shows, big shows, obviously the most opportunity to catch people, win people over and stuff like that. Um, but I know, but um, I went to, first I went to Detroit. Um, Andre um, put on puts on that show. Very small show. <clears throat> trying to get about maybe 800 people throughout the whole day or whatever. But when I was at that show, I, I realized afterwards I didn't pitch. 
I was just at my table and people were just coming up to my table to get the books. They were just like, nice. oh shoot, that looks cool. And we, we sold a lot of books. And I was like, oh, that was that was different. Um, and then I went to a, a bigger mainstream show and then I noticed I'm pitching, I'm chasing, I'm doing the um, um, everything that I do at a show to get attention and to sell those books or whatever. And I was like, that was a lot of damn work um, compared to what I did in Detroit. And the first time I've ever gone to Cincinnati Comic Expo, which is one of the last comic book conventions on the circuit. And I pitched like, what, eight or 10 times that entire weekend. We sold out of seven books that weekend. People just came up out of genuine interest of saying, what is this? What do you have here? Now, we also probably had a really good spot, and that helps. I'm not going to say it doesn't. Um, but I definitely... Um, I'm definitely thinking about what shows I'm going to moving forward that involve less work. I'm old. I'm tired. Uh, and <laughs> outside of that, though, I don't. I, while I appreciate the one-time fan that's like, "Hey, I like you, my guy. I'm going to support you. I like your hustle. That shit is great. It's always going to be good when you win somebody over and they're like, "I want to help this person succeed." But mm -hmm. that person isn't a long-term fan. And I feel like what we got in Detroit and what we got in Cincinnati were people who were like, oh, no, I'm looking for a comic book. I'm looking for something to follow. Um, oh, but oh God. Is, wait, Dan, but Danny, that's not what you, but ain't what he's saying. Cincinnati you, what he's show. saying ain't what you saying, Danny, so stop. Cincinnati is, <laughs> Cincinnati is still a big show. It's a big comic book. They had a ton of traffic. Like, if I had to say any show that I went to this year, Cincinnati did the best job in getting people that I've seen in the door there were no dead zones there were no dead times if you didn't make money in cincinnati it's because you didn't talk right hold on i want to answer Moana said uh she asked um uh if you aren't good at performing or you don't want to perform, perform i would find somebody who does yeah and and, and and school them in how to sell your product and then let them do the work and you just be the talent yeah, I, I've seen it a lot. It, it absolutely works. Um, Ryan um, was at his second combo convention. He worked the table with us. After a day, Ryan had to pitch because I was kind of under the leather that weekend, so I didn't do a lot of talking either. Ryan and Tony was just bam, 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 bam. They were on it, but again, they weren't pitching, but they understood what you know what we were selling, so they were able to have that conversation with people. Yeah. So yeah, if you're not a talker. And this was a discussion we had at uh, CCAD too. Find someone that can talk for you, somebody that is supportive and believes in your product that can help you do that. Because being loud and vocal ain't for everybody. I can tell you right now, me and Javon are probably the loudest two people on this on this staff right now. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work for everybody. And also, don't get it twisted. Art does sell outside of a pitch. There are people who the artwork is just so good people just come up to it and you don't have to do nothing but i also think that's far and few in between you still have a mouthpiece to some degree yeah absolutely yo this has been dope um we gotta get out of here pretty soon but i want to do my quick takes before <laughs> we do i got some questions for y'all um just to see about the future um the future you know that you envision your stuff in the next couple of years so um kyron if you will, let's get these quick takes going, sir. Quick takes. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. So, um, this first question, this first question is for the whole group. I want everybody to answer it. Um, who is your dream indie collab? If you could collaborate on a project a pinup, a book, or whatever with one indie creator, who would you pick starting with Morgan? Who are you picking? Um, um, Morgan, it's Marcus a trap. Williams. Marcus Williams. <laughs> That's a good answer. Marcus Williams, he, he killing the game right now in art. Right, we've, we've had some pinups. Right All right, Javon, who would you pick as your dream indie collab? Honestly, Mr. Watson, Michael Watson in the building. Wow. We can make that happen. We can make that happen. Um, I'm, Absolutely. I'm, 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 he wanted to say I'm me. Thinking, 
I'm taking a five percent finder's fee on that one. Um, <laughs> why why would you be my dream collab? See, I was about to say something. I'm gonna be quiet. I'm about, I was about to say something. I, didn't, yeah, I, just I was about to say wait till we get in person. We can buy satisfied about it. I was about to say <laughs> something nice to you. You know what? Oh, uh, <laughs> go ahead. Please, no, wait. no, no. Everybody no, stop. Nope. Everybody stop. He's about to say something nice. Mm -mm. To me nah, they happened. gotta answer their <laughs> question. Go ahead. We ain't got time. We ain't got time. We got to take. We got to take. <laughs> Dio, who would you who would you pick as your dream indie collab? All right. Uh, um, I don't know. You know what? George too big. I, I don't know. George is not too big. Um, <laughs> I can't say Marcus because I worked on a book with him. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I like. Up. I've worked with a lot of people already, so I really don't know who I'd pick that I haven't worked with yet. Me, me, um, me. <clears throat> oh, man, let me think, let me think, let me think. You know what? I, I see Moana in the comment in the comments. I'd work with her. Moana, that's a good, that's a good pick. Moana McCaffrey. That's a great pick. Moana's a beast. Right, that's a great pick. This. What about you? I know you write and you draw and you letter and you color and you stitch, <laughs> but if you work with somebody else, uh, who would you take in the indie community? Oh, dang. You know, I met so many amazing people. It's hard <laughs> to choose. Um, dang, y'all. Ooh. Because like, I have I have top three. Can I say top three? Give, give me, give me I top bet. three. So it would be Victor, Michael, and Moana. Definitely, because nice. they fit my aesthetic. Great, <laughs> I, like, I like it. Great pick. I, I love it. I um, I Michael Watson, most epic. I know you've worked with every, with two hundred and some uh, <laughs> yeah, on chat and draw. But That's, in the, I was, in the I was community, gonna say Mike, but we already worked together. Is there, <laughs> is there anybody left in the indie community that that, that you haven't worked with that you want to work with? Hey, I'm about to I'm about to be like this. Uh, and follow, follow great leadership. Uh, number one, Moana, because we're already working on a book, and I just want us to find time Let's to go. finish it because um, it's awesome and we love it. But we got we got to find time. Number two is Vess. She's been super busy, and I actually already tried to get at her. And I'm I'm, I'm hoping that now that we've built this relationship together, she can open up some time for me. <laughs> and uh, number three is Unlikely Hero Studios. Uh, but we are working on a crossover yeah. with our characters next year. Yeah, unlikely heroes. Lori, Lori was definitely, Lori was definitely in my killing the game. Okay, all right. Um, Wait, Kyron. I get to answer that one. Like, yeah, Kyron. No, no Kyron, Kyron. You. Okay. So going back to our original discussion, I'm gonna say Todd McFarlane. Y'all said he was indie still, so I'm gonna say McFarlane. I mean, I said dream. I mean, you said dream. I did call him Indy, but I wasn't Adam. thinking. I wasn't thinking. You said dream. See, I'm not gonna argue. I'm not gonna argue. I'm gonna argue with you. <laughs> All right, now let's go the other way back around. So I want to know. Um, I'm gonna pick one of your. Well, pick one of your books, and I would say who is your dream cover artist for that book. Starting with Kyron for you know whichever book that of yours that you want, which uh who would be a dream cover artist? All right. Well, I'll be honest, I would love it doesn't to have, have to be any uh, either. It can be professional, any anybody. Oh done. Damn. Oh, I done. got mine. Shit. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna say I want an Adam Hughes cover uh Saw the Lightning Wilder. Love it. I want a Nah, we just George want one. cover. Just one, uh, <laughs> just, one, just one dream. You only get one dream. All right, fine. Adam fine. Oh Hughes, my God. Saw the lightning bolt. There we go. Now you can't get the George Gaines. I got mine. I, I got mine. That's easy. Damn it. All right, I'm. I'm, I'm doing want, too. I want, I want um Brian Stelfreeze on Ace Blade. That's what I want to do. I want to get that. I want, Why are you cheating? That time. Um, but I had to just put that out there in the atmosphere. Um, Mike, who would you pick for which title? Oh my goodness gracious! And so uh, I'm so disappointed because uh, his name is escaping my uh, my mind. Mm, don't pick him. I'm, I'm right here. Kyron Silva. On <laughs> right? Right was? He's right there. <laughs> I mean, I'm um, right underneath. I'm, I'm right here, man. I, you, 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 are, you in the queue? 
You in the queue. <laughs> hey, man, he said I'm in the, you, you basically tell me I'm in the back of the line. Come on. Man. No, 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 not the back of the line. He said you're no, in you, the line. You're, you're in, in the line. line. That oh, matters. You're in, you're in the top I'm just five. Messing with, I'm just messing. Go ahead. He man, just didn't man. say how long the, the line the, is. That's the problem. <laughs> he didn't say number 95. You're number 5,420. <laughs> The number one. Yeah. Um, the number one. Oh, uh, God, I can't. I always pronounce his name wrong, but he he drew um Civil War 2. Oh, Steve he McNiven. Said. Not Steve oh. McNiven. Oh, uh, uh, Oliver Copio? Copio? Yeah. Oh, Oliver Copio. Copio. oh, yeah. Copio. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Copio, that's a, I, would that's a, I would love him to do a hot shot. Hot shot? Yeah, mm-hmm. that, 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 would fit, that would fit great. Okay. All right. Um, Vest, Celestial Post, what, who, who you bring into the who you bring into the book? Um, I don't know who the specific artist is, but you know the people that made um, Castlevania, the Netflix series? Yes. Like the artist oh. for that. I will love them to work on my stuff. That's yeah, a, I don't that know was, their specific hey. name. That art style that's, is... That's super fit to us. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Gio, I'm picking, I'm picking, I'm picking Scotty Young for your, uh, for the toddler, um, but who would you, who would you How put? How you gonna pick this Man, you know, no, Scotty, no, no, Scotty actually uh, popped up in my head. Um, but uh, if I had to pick like, just like one person of anybody, like I, I feel like I would have to pick uh, Bill Watterson mm. oh. uh, for the toddler. Like, I don't think there can be anyone else. Mm. Um, but Scotty, Scotty's a really good choice, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I love that, I love that. All right, Javon, um, you picking heat or you picking strong? No, and um, no, he is he is my is my first child. Uh, <laughs> you put it on I, I, I'm a cheat a little bit. I don't care. My uh, my dream artist is no longer with us. Um, George Perez. Uh, oh. if, if I could have got mm-hmm. a heat book uh, by George Perez, I, I probably would have left this earth uh, and and gone to the, to the ancestral plane. Um, uh, <laughs> but but really, it's only two guys: uh, Alex Ross or Todd McFarlane. I love it. Great pick. All right, now more. Now, the pressure's on you now. I know you don't. I know you don't really follow a lot of mainstream artists. Uh, but uh, no, I knew I as soon as you asked. All right. Uh, who, the who correct get? way to pronounce my name is Kai Run. If you want. <laughs> Kai Run. <laughs> I also Kai Run. Kai okay. Ren, if you. <laughs> uh, no so, so for let me say it for, wrong. For lumber. For lumberjacks, still freeze for sure. Uh, yeah. Either Steel Freeze or, or Todd McFarlane. Uh, for Harlem, a four. All right, one. Automatic. One. one. Too two late. Listen, that's a good one. Uh, one uh, title. A four, four for Harlem. It's, already, it's already, out. already out there. You got any more questions, then? I like it. I do. I do. Um, I want to know. Every, this will be my last one. I'm not going to ask the last two because we, we're running out of time. But I want to know everybody's dream mainstream job like if you could work for marvel in dc what would you want to do what project would you want to work on and then we'll we'll get out of here let's start with let's start in the middle with geo okay okay um i mean i'm kind of happy doing what i'm doing now but if i can do anything uh i would want to work on a turtles title oh okay it's uh okay my my favorite most favorite thing of everything like give me a turtle title and i will i will kill it that's I my pitch it's... give it to me i'll kill it i love it i, I, I like that pitch. Pitch. vez vez next uh dream your dream mainstream job what would you what would you pick what would you want to work on dang that one that one is really tricky um i definitely would like to work with Netflix actually and work on their animated series either as an artist or a director because they've been pulling out some really great ones. So um okay. like Cannon Buster and stuff like that. I want to do stuff like that. I love it. Love it. Love it. All right, we're going the other way. Javon, what's your dream mainstream job? Uh if we're just talking like working on a mainstream title uh so i have been in love with this concept and these characters since they came out if i could do new warriors for marvel i'd be a happy man i'd be a happy man 
that's that's a, that's a solid pick. I think you I think you would I think you would do good on New Warrior. Um Morgan, what's your dream um mainstream title? Uh I mean if if I have to if I if I if I have to work on some uh, like somebody else's title, I would love to be able to do something with of course for God of War or uh do like a read a story between uh Black Panther and uh Killmonger, uh, something there. But a lab would be with either working with like writing. Hey, how many do you like to I would like to write I would like to write with I would like to write with a full for Jordan Peele. I don't care who either one. Follow directions, man. We didn't ask for you. Since when does Morgan ever follow rules? I gave follow directions. Never follow rules. I did. All right. No, All right, Mike. Mike, it's on you. Uh, what is your uh, your dream mainstream job? Hey, there's uh, so many things that I would love to do and I've been wanting to do for a long time, but uh, I, I got to follow the great leadership of this again. Uh, my dream, my dream gig would be a Freestyle Comics Universe toy line. I have been talking about yep. doing that and how I want to do that different from other toy lines with like collectible battle damage buildings that you can put together for a full set, um, figures, you know, fully articulated figures that are actually to scale uh, that you can use for the roles. And, nope, not McFarlane, buddy. Not McFarlane. <laughs> uh, you know, They're a called Most toy Epic line. Toys is what it is. <laughs> most Epic Toys. Go. Okay. That's uh, a good name. That's a good name. If I could do a that toy is a great line name. Okay. Characters, that would I would be so so very happy with that. All right. Um, for me, I'm gonna say I would like to do a Green Lantern book. I would love to write a, a John John Stewart Green Lantern um book. Um and uh Kyron. <laughs> Kyron, um, what's your dream action job to close this out? Dark Hawk. <laughs> If I had to choose Tyler one Perry. thing, I would do uh I would do a run of Dark Hawk. You knew you called I, it. I have called every it. book that Dark Hawk was in up until like two thousand five. So yeah, that'd be my thing. I love it. Hey, I'm gonna be praying for each and every one of y'all to get everything that you want in your dreams, man. We appreciate y'all coming on. Kyron, you wanna close us out? Not for really. I, I I'm having too much fun. I wanna keep going, but let's go, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> do it, bro. Let's do it. All right, you know, I, all right. I know you said you didn't skip the last two, but do uh, number five. Do number five, and then we'll then we'll close number it out. Five. Okay, all right. Yeah. So we'll close out with that. Um, everybody, tell me your uh, the best part. So number the question number four was going to be what is the worst part of being an indie. I want to know what is the best part of the indie grind in your in your uh, opinion. For me, it's always um, meeting converting new people, so people who never heard about these stories before and then opening their eyes up to to oh man this is something that a real person created you know from their imagination and they take interest in it that's my favorite part of the indie grind um Kyron what's your favorite part honestly the best part right now is meeting other indie creators uh doing stuff like this where I get to see the the wealth of creativity that's in this industry um, i wouldn't be able to do that if i wasn't trying to do it myself i wouldn't have met any of you guys if i wasn't trying to do this myself so that'd be my thing love it um most epic that's the best part of the indie grind um it's funny that you ask that because i'm gonna have to say it was packing up the kickstarters um <laughs> I did not Ooh. realize, or I don't realize, like we move numbers, we're, we're selling books, we're going to conventions and stuff, and stuff like that. But when you're doing a Kickstarter and you're packing and shipping, and then you look at the list of shit that people get from you, and you're yeah. like, somebody really put down a lot of money for all this stuff. <laughs> right? When you have I, people I, that actually, you put out a product and like they buy the shoes or the jacket, and not believe it with your characters on it. it. And like me and Danny, um, Dan, Danny Cooper are sitting here packing the other night, and we had to put together six boxes, and each one of those boxes were over eight pounds of comics. Mm, man, wow, that's man, that that's crazy. So I mean, 
Awesome. That would be like all the work, all the work, the hustle, the rigor more doing a Kickstarter and then seeing the results of it and actually putting your hands on that and packing and shipping and seeing like people actually like my book. They, they really want it. And, and that's, that's a very amazing feeling. I love it. I hate, I literally hate shipping. It's the worst part. Oh, I do. I do. I do. I do. But, too, but, but that makes up for it. But from the, the perspective that you, you talk about it from, absolutely. I agree with you. All right, Bess, what, um, Bess, what's your, what's the, the best part of the indie grind for you? So definitely everything that you guys said, but on top of that, just knowing the names and personalities and just the people that help support. So having that community base and them evolving you as an artist and a writer is the top tier for me, is the highlight mm -hmm. of it all. I love it. Great answer. Great answer. Gio, I see you thinking hard. Uh, what's, what's the best part of the indie grind for you? For me, it is... Um... Man, um, uh, um, fuck. counting that money. <laughs> what money? <laughs> what money? It, count the money. Me, it, it yeah, money. I, got, money. I will help. Trust me, it ain't the money. No, no, for me, it is, um, it is seeing my own personal growth. Uh, I want to say, I want to say, um, because I've been doing this for a very long time and my grind I feel is different uh, than a lot of yours uh, as you know I do a web comic and things like that well but just seeing like you know what I did uh, who I was what I was creating how people was uh, responding to it and seeing you know what I'm doing now and you know what I've been able to achieve since then um, and the growth and things like that like it it gives me a, um, this sense of satisfaction that, hey, I made this. This is what my work looks like. This is how people are responding to it, as opposed to, you know, how people responded to it, say, 10 years ago. Yeah. And, and it makes me excited to see what can I do next. Absolutely. I love uh, one thing I love about social media is that they give you the reminders of, of what you were doing, you know, mm -hmm. five, 10 years ago. And I, and I always love seeing like the growth of of artists and, and writers and and creators so absolutely javon the best part of the indie grind for you uh comment on that uh those reminders that social media give you sometimes those are the biggest like encouragement like 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 they come out of nowhere too it'll be like i'll be having like a rough day and like it'll be like five years ago you just put out your first book and i'm like okay i can i can go i can keep going anyway yeah. Um, uh, for me, everything you guys said, yeah, but uh, I'll add this. When I am at a con and somebody runs up to my table and they're like, I've been looking for you. I want to get, give me everything you got. Like, I loved your last book. It, like, because, you know, we're, all this we do, we do insular, you know what I mean? Like, we're sitting at a drawing table or sitting at a computer. And I know a lot of us have had that feeling like we're just shouting in the wind. And we, you know, it's like sometimes you're like, what am I doing this for? Like, like, does anybody care? And so when I get that, like somebody's been looking for me and they come back and they just, yo, I love the first book. I got to get the next one. And then they just literally get everything you got at the table. Like it gives me a little more juice to keep going because now I'm going, I'm, I'm going to keep going for that person. If nobody else, I'm going to keep going for that person. And then, you know, that just adds up and adds up. Absolutely. All right, Morgan, you had time to think about it. What is the best part of the Andy Brown for you? Uh, everything you guys said is, is definitely just for, for me or the most important thing for me is inspiring somebody else. Um, where they see, you know, sometimes it's, it's people that, you know, know his health and stuff like that, and they see that I still put the book out. Uh, or I still did this, or I still did that. So there's this, you know, and whatever. Or, or somebody read, somebody does give you a book a chance, and and some, they come up to, to the con like, yo, I got to get this. Or like, like um, with my boy uh, uh, Bruno Bruho TikTok, you know, what I'm saying, when well, he made that video showing our stuff and saying we helped him get through the pandemic, it's better than that, you know. what I'm saying having having a person come across your work, be inspired by it, enjoy for it. I'm saying like that's that's the best feeling 
ever. Because I mean, I write to inspire and uh, either educate or change perspective. So, so being in a space where somebody for this and is not connected to you gives you that return that they are or they are, they did change their perception is the biggest thing for me. Absolutely, absolutely. And I tell you, um, me and me and Morgan been doing shows for for a while, and I'm telling you. Uh, that that one time when that dude came and bought lumberjack, we were just having a conversation about if if Morgan if lumberjacks was a uh, if he had anger issues. This dude walked up. He was like, "I got to check this book out to see what y'all talking about." This dude read the whole book and came back and was like, "Bruh, yeah, he does have anger issues." Like he came back the next day. And yeah, was like yeah, he kind of angry. Bro. You might want you might want to send Jacks to therapy. And I'm like, "Yo, man, you that cannot." Dude, you was from Ireland. He was from. Ireland. Ireland, like he came, he, he came up for the show from Ireland. Bought the book, it was the short story. It was, it was the first thing I did for Lumberjacks was the short story, which is like some of the chapters had the entire short story. It's like a hundred some pages. He read it that same night. Came back the next day. It was like, yeah, he does. Danny busted out laughing, but but that's like the best feeling. But Danny, he had a time where he he gave this. Uh, I, I don't remember if it was a raffle that we were doing like at the end of the show or whatever, but he gave, gave this kid his shirt. And, and that same kid came back the next year. He yeah. came back the next two years, if I'm not mistaken. The next two years wearing the Ace Blade shirt. Like, I, of all the characters in the world that you can wear, yeah, that man. you could, this dude had on the uh, Ace Blade t-shirt that I literally printed and, and hand ironed on. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. So, um, but yeah, man, look, we could, we could talk all day. Um, but I, I really appreciate y'all coming back on with us, man, celebrating this 50th episode. Um, tell everybody, tell, tell everybody where they can find you. Um, and we'll, we'll close the show out. Morgan, where can people find you? Uh, y'all know Facebook, uh, my, my normal name. I'm on there more, most, uh, uh, You're not in jail. Yeah. shut up. Top five live on YouTube. Agents of geek them in agents. It's either a week or two weeks. We'll be, we'll be over with. Agents of Geekdom streaming there for Top Five Live. Uh, uh, wait, what? What's our website? <laughs> Bookwall <laughs> <Pros. laughs> <laughs> Pro slash Plus Culture. <laughs> Javon, where can people find you? I see visuallystoked.com uh, right there. Of course, www.visuallystoked.com. You can find me on Facebook, just like Morgan. My name, uh, a Stoke Podcast. I do every Thursday at eight live. Uh, you can see that on the Stoke Podcast, or, or you can go to the website, or you can go on YouTube. Uh, and then, obviously, with, I'm with these fools on Top 5 Live at the same place. Love it. Uh, Gio, where can people find you? Um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, at Gio Gant Art, um, at Beware Toddler. Um, if you're subscribed to Comics Kingdom, uh, you can read Beware Toddler there. Um BeWareToller.com. Yeah. There it is. All right. Vicenia, where can people find you? Well, I'm Google friendly because I'm the only person with Vicenia in the world. So put me up on you. You go ahead, go on Google. Vicenia Designs. You'll find me on Twitch, YouTube, TikTok, you name it, I'm on it. Hey, I love that. The Google works wonderfully when it when it works for you. Absolutely. Um I'll go me next since I'm since I didn't got replaced as a co-host. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can find me at uh, at the Ace Blade on all social medias, um, or here in the store in Burlington, North Carolina. But our website is fourthwallpros.com. Um, I will not be at um, Baltimore Comic Con, but Ace Blade will be there featuring Keith on the cover. Hopefully, if if let's if, go, if UPS works, <laughs> we'll have it. <laughs> Oh, um, Michael Watson, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on all social media as Most Epic Art on all socials. Uh, as far as freestyle comics, it is fsknow.com. And in about a week and a half, we'll be launching our next Kickstarter at fsknow.com. Oh, this what is this, 12 this year? How many? How many? Kickstarters? <laughs> I know, right? Seriously, <laughs> killing it, killing it. Um, Kyron, I can't people find you. So. 
you can find me at TaurusComics.com. I am on Twitter, or Instagram, TikTok, at TaurusComics. And if this is your first time checking out the Four Tales podcast, please go back to our website, FourTalesPodcast.com. That is the number four, T-A-L-E-S, podcast.com. And you can go ahead and check out some of our previous episodes. With all these people who have been on our show, uh, Mike and Javon have been on there multiple times. Uh, and Morgan was actually our first guest. So we thank everybody for hope a good time. But hold on. My, my notes. I got it. This computer. You should, Who do we you have, have memorized week? by now? Come on now. Uh, all right. Next week, our 51st oh, okay. episode, we are going to have Moana McAdams and Ryan Robinson on the line. They're going to talk about Robinson. their yes, current book oh. and yeah. their Kickstarter. So until then, sayonara. Goodbye. Bye. Please take care of yourselves. I wanna know what it is Quick is trying to say